All right, what's up, folks? We're back with part two, part two of uh, of the tour retrospective of 2019. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm calling it now. Uh, uh, you, you guys got to see. Hopefully, hopefully, you guys got to see part one. And uh, just as a as a quick recap of uh, what uh, what this is is, I I want to talk about some of my favorite shows of 2019. Some of the uh, the venues that I've got to work with, the producers, the bookers that I've got to work with, um, that have been super fucking cool, and um, the shows and the audience, people and the, uh, the the people that I've met across the country, uh, because as I mentioned in the last video, touring can be very difficult. It can be very lonely experience. Um, so uh, I want to be appreciative and recognize the cool, good things that have happened along the way for. Uh, for 2019 as, as, uh, you know, just as something that's cool for me as, as part of like, uh, keeping positivity out there. Uh, but also to, to kind of, it, it also serves as like a weird memory exercise for me too. Um, I, I, I've kind of known, been known to have a, a strange, uh, memory. So, but I also like want to show gratitude to the people that I've worked with as well. Um, because I do appreciate it because I understand that the things that I, that the thing that I do and the, and, and the type of comedy that I, uh, do is a little, little weird, little different. Um, and, uh, and it's not part of the mainstream. So taking a chance on something this fringy and stuff is, I, I appreciate it quite a bit. Uh, and I want to let the people know. So it's a part one was the first 15 and this was the second 15. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, this is sort of a, a, a way to say thank you and uh, a way to like remember that there were some very positive times. Uh, it, it, you know, I think people get hung up on um, negativity a lot. Uh, so I want this to, to, to be uh, focusing more on the positive aspects of things. So let's start with, uh, uh, th this starts with one of my favorite venues, uh, uh, obviously, because it's part of this retrospective, uh, the Idiot Box Comedy Club. Um, I love this fucking space. I've been going to the Idiot Box for the last couple of years. Uh, Jenny Stencil, Sten I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Jenny, if I'm fucking up your last name, uh, let me know. Because <laughs> I, I, every time I say it, I'm like, I'm, I feel like I'm fucking it up. Uh, but Jenny and Steve... Uh, they run the venue. Uh, Eric uh, also uh, usually works at the bar, and um, they started out in in in, in the basement of uh, of this gaming bar. Uh, and again, like I fucking love these basement venues. <laughs> I just I just do like these the basement venues are great. Uh, and so I would go. I went to this basement bar a couple times, and and the turnout was pretty well. Uh, you know, like it, we we would get 15, 20 people in the rooms, and it would be a really good time. Uh, and uh, and so they moved to their own space. Uh, I think in twenty eighteen, and I got to perform there in November of twenty eighteen, and we packed the room out. Uh, we, I think we ended up with like close to 30 people or maybe just a little over 30 people in that room when I did Empathy on Sale and it was like this incredibly fun show um, and I went back there in August and we got uh, I think like a little over 25 people there this time um, and and I gotta say a big shout out to uh, my friend Dean Driver um, who I need to be a little bit better about keeping communication with I need to be better about keeping communication with a bunch of people uh, but uh, Dean, uh, I've stayed with Dean. Dean's a fantastic musician. He has an album called Late Bloomer uh, that is uh, that is on my computer, and I listen to it, uh, and it's a fantastic album. I highly recommend it. Uh, but Dean, Dean brings people out. Like, he brought a whole group of people to the first show. He brought a whole group of people to the second show, uh, and he hangs out with some cool-ass fucking people. <laughs> so... Uh, thank you. Like I, I'm super appreciative uh, that that he does that. That, and uh, every time that I come through Greensboro, he he uh, ha offers me a place to stay with him and everything. And um, we we sit and chat uh, uh, over a, a, a glass of beer and we'll we'll bullshit about things and get deep and get inter And he's a very interesting human being. Um, and I think he might be one of the most zen people that I've ever fucking met in my life. Uh, and that's really fucking cool. Um, yeah, I, I th Dean's, Dean's one of those people that I appreciate quite often. Go check out his album. Um, 
I think he's recording another one. I think. Don't hold me to that. Uh, but the Idiot Box Comedy Club, uh, I, man, I love that room. Um, and and they've come a long way. Like, like they were still under construction when I was there in 2018. And to see what, how far they've come and the work that they've put in in uh, in creating this this comedy community and fostering this comedy community you know uh to to be a club where people come in and expect something different and expect something that might be a little bit more challenging and expect something that might be um you know uh out of the box and not something that they would see on the mainstream that 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 is going to challenge their 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 thoughts and their beliefs and things of that sort uh that's really, really fucking cool. Um, and I very much appreciate that. And uh, Jenny's going to uh, be back on my podcast, uh, Taboo Table Talk. We just recorded the interview. That's going to come out in, in a, a few weeks. Um, and uh, and I'm excited to go back there. I think I'll probably be back there uh, uh, fall, winter-ish time frame. Um, I think Greensboro is one of those once a year kind of places, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but we will, we, we, we will see how that works out. Uh, but you know, she's somebody that really like works really hard on the business side of things and works really hard on the creative side of things in fostering this community. Um, and that's something that's rare, you know, they're like Jim Bryan at, at Church of Satire or somebody that does that, that doesn't happen all the time. Um, so like these 30 venues and these people that I'm talking about kind of are in that same, uh, same crop of people, you know, they, they come from that same stock of people. So, uh, yeah, I love, I fucking love the idiot box and I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to see the growth and the, uh, and the continual success of it. Uh, Jenny also runs the North Carolina comedy festival, uh, which is this huge comedy festival that happens every year. Uh, and she runs around and talks about getting absolutely no sleep. <laughs> so if you're if you go to that comedy festival, if you see that comedy festival, uh, buy Jenny a coffee, and uh, and let her know uh, that you're there for her and that she's fucking kicking ass. She's doing great. Uh, so I'm very excited. I'm excited to come back to uh, to Greensboro. Uh, it, it is uh, it, it it is one of my favorite places. Uh, to be and I got to see my friend Lonnie and we got to have lunch and talk and hang out with with uh, you know with each other um, I like telling the story about Lonnie because it's um, it's such a neat story uh, about him talking to his uncle um, and kind of like introducing new ideas to his uncle and basically the lesson that he learned at the end is like oh I have to keep like I have to keep this, you know, the the spirit alive. Like if I introduce some of these new progressive ideas to him, like I have to continue to be the anchor uh, until somebody else can consistently come back and be the anchor too. Like we can't just we can't just you know plant a seed and expect it to grow. We have to keep watering it. Um, so it's it, yeah, I like hanging out with them. He's cool. He's a cool dude. Uh, my friend Carter came down from from Charlotte to come see the show. Uh, Carter might have seen the show more than anybody else. <laughs> Just a shout out to Carter. I will probably, uh, I will talk about Car uh, Carter a little bit more, uh, uh, later in this video, but, uh, I think he might have come to see the show more than anybody else has so far. <laughs> Be like Carter, people. Come to see my material more than once. Um... I did a and then I, I did a house show for in Greenville, South Carolina, uh, that was put together by the Greenville uh, Green Party, the Upstate South Carolina Green Party, uh, and the uh, the uh, South Carolina Freedom Fighters, um, and uh, both their organizations. I highly recommend to people, uh, and you guys should go check them out. You guys should go support them. Um, but the house show was put together uh, by my friend Greg. Uh, he is, has been a fan. He saw me open for Lee a few years back in Asheville. And every time that I've come through Greenville or Asheville, so, sometimes he's, he's traveled out to Asheville. He's traveled out to Columbia to come see me. Uh, this guy's like a fucking super fan and I very much appreciate him. Uh, and you know, like I, I like sitting down and having conversations with him. He's a cool dude, man. And another dude that's like very chill about shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> and like he's got this jovial spirit i fucking love it so so when he wanted me to do the show uh at his house i was very very pumped to to do it very excited to set something up with him uh, but I was a little late getting to that show because I ran into some car trouble. I, I don't know what happened, but I guess something pierced the sidewall of my of my car. And I had this fucking freak out, right? Because I was like, I just bought this car. It's a brand new car. Like, what is happening? Why is everything failing? This is awful. And then, like, the rest of the tour, I was just fucking paranoid about, like, the tire pressure in my car, the, the whole thing. Um, and I had to like buy a new tire and rush out and like get to Greenville in time. And I made it there like with this much time to spare the, you know, so like I fortunately had a couple openers. So like they already kicked off the show, which was cool. Cause we had a couple people like waiting. Um, we raised some money for the freedom fighters, which was nice as well. Uh, and I got to see a few people that I hadn't seen in quite some time. Um, and, uh, I'm, I, so I'm, I'm hoping to see some of the, some folks, uh, at, at, at my Columbia, South Carolina show at the comedy closet, cause Greenville and Columbia are, are, are relatively close. Um, it only might only be an hour away. Uh, but it'll be cool. I, I, I'm pro it's probably the closest I'm coming to, to Greenville, South Carolina for a little while. It might be till the fall or the winter time that I, um, that I come back through that area. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to, you know, uh, throw a shout out to those folks. They were, they're pretty fucking rad. Uh, then we got to the St. Louis Fringe Festival, uh, which, uh, I'm going to be doing a show at the improv shop, uh, because of the St. Louis Fringe Festival, I got to meet some really cool comedians that run the Flyover Comedy Festival and a few shows around town. Uh, Rafe Williams and uh, um, and company Bobby uh, and Tina, um, they they run some shows around town and uh, Rafe has very generously and kindly like put me up at the Improv Shop in March. Um, so I'll be I'll probably be teaming up with uh, with the St. Louis Fringe Festival for that show as well, um, and uh, it, it should be a really really fun show. I'm very excited about going back to it because here's here's the thing. So there were three shows at the St. Louis Fringe Festival, um, and they were they were actually like I was a little concerned because I was in a weirder space and I was not sure how it was gonna play out. But it played out fucking great. Uh, one of my shows almost sold out. Uh, the other two shows did pretty darn well. Um, and the previous year attendance had been a little bit of an issue for some of the smaller shows. Um, but this year, like the fringe really like was focused on getting everybody a really good crowd. And the thing is you can't do that for every show, right? I think there was like 40 some odd shows, uh, each of them getting three shows each show. So the odds are that somebody is unfortunately not going to get a good turnout and and that sucks when that happens it really does but the fringe all of the fringes that i've worked with pittsburgh atlanta st louis that i worked with last year um really do a fucking put put their best efforts into making sure that people come to see as many shows as they can um, and I know St. Louis has been tough, uh, in terms of entertainment and stuff like that. So, uh, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Again, there is a community spirit behind the St. Louis Fringe Festival. That's part of the reason why I apply to this festival every year now. You know, I've, I've, uh, been applying to it for the last three years. Um, and, uh, and it has been an honor to be a part of it. Uh, the the three years that I have been a part of it, or well, the two years that I've been a part of it, but the three years that I did apply to it, so I uh, I'm I'm very like excited to do it again. You know, when applications open up again, this is one of the festivals that I do look into, um, and I'm going to be looking into a few other fringe festivals as well this year um, because of the connections that I've made at these other fringe festivals and the recommendations that I've gotten from those people. Um, so I am going to you know, but that again. That's another thing that you get out of it. You you get to meet cool people that are like, hey, have you done this thing? Have you done this festival? Have you done that festival, right? Um, so it's a really really fucking cool thing. It's a really fucking cool thing, and I'm and I'm excited 
uh, to, to do it because the shows were really fun and I got to see some incredible shows. That's something I didn't talk about with the Atlanta Fringe Festival thing is I got to see some incredible fucking shows. And that's the cool part about being part of these Fringe Festivals is you get to see some other really cool shows that could inspire you, you know, that, that could, uh, that could challenge you a little bit more, get you to think a little bit differently. So and if you live in a city where there's a fucking Fringe Festival, get get some passes get some tickets go see this stuff support these arts um you know uh give up your netflix for a month to go see you know eight really incredible shows that that are gonna you know stay with you for a while uh that's what i say so i'm excited to come back to st louis in march uh i'm excited to work with the fringe festival i'm excited to work with rafe uh and bobby and tina and everybody at the imp- and and uh perform at the improv shop uh, because that was another thing, right? I, I met these folks. I did the comedy showcase that they had this year at the Fringe. And, um, and, and you know, I got to meet Rafe. I got to check out his stand-up. And then he added me to his show, his weekly showcase. Um, and I got to do that which in, in this, like, incredibly intimate room. Like, the improv shop is super fucking cool. Um, so when I came back through, when I was coming back through, I talked to, to Rafe. And we, we got a date hooked up in March of 2020 uh for me to come back so i'm i'm excited to to come back to uh to st louis and i and i hope to see some uh some of my fringe friends uh at that show um then we did uh, i did uh uh the mill in iowa city and uh that was a really interesting show because i rewrote a bunch of material from that show because when i did it at the fringe i was able to kind of tighten up a portion of the show right like really wind it down and really hone it in and then when i got to iowa city i started to change other aspects of the show and start to tweak it up a little bit and i added this portion of the show um that i'm <laughs> i am cutting for this show right I'm, I'm taking it out of politely angry backlogging it and putting it into the next show but it's the first place that I got to do it, and it's the bit about the uh, about classism and the founding fathers, and I read these excerpts and quotes from them and everything, and and it's a bit that I'm I'm really excited about. It, it, it genuinely like it, it that bit, though it has been very frustrating to make it funny and add jokes, um, and and add levity to this this serious topic. It is so much fun to do, because of the challenge behind it. So I'm very excited to continue that challenge going forward. And the mill at Iowa City was the first place that I did it. Uh, And that is another really cool venue as well. Uh, Daniel Frana runs it. So I think I'll be going back there in March as well. Um, And it's, it's a yeah, I mean, again, it's one of those rooms where when you walk in, you're like, I don't know how this is going to work. And then you kind of see it from the stage and you kind of figure out how it works because yes, the stage is a little high, but the ceilings are pretty darn low. So it kind of creates, again, this kind of I- intimate setting, right? Where it pulls the audience into the show. Uh, and when the audience is engaged on that level, it, it really creates uh, a, a fun dynamic um, where you can try uh, a bit that's like, hey, we're like 48 minutes in, let me let me do some weird let me do something weird that i haven't done before and then we'll you know we'll we'll get to, we'll get to the end of the show which is a little bit more uh concrete and tighter um but uh you know p- part of the process for me is i perform 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 and then listen back and start writing the like changing the the material and and then as i'm writing it i'll tweak and and change it so when I was in Iowa City, I did a massive rewrite about a bunch of stuff. Uh, and the last time I did that was in Atlanta Fringe. And then even before that was at the very beginning of the show, I was doing these 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 rewrites, right? These massive rewrites. And now that it's the holiday season, I'll be going back in and kind of redoing it all over again. So, um, yeah, I, I do these big rewrites at these specific points after I've, I've, I've constantly been doing a version of the show and tweaking it while I'm on stage. Um, and the mill was one of the places that I really started doing that with the show. Um, then we, we, we had, uh, two shows with, uh, with Lee camp in, um, 
Milwaukee and uh, in Milwaukee and Madison and, and in Milwaukee, fucking Mel from Chicago showed up. And I was like, this is, you're fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> like, you came out to see us again. You're, you're fucking, you're awesome. Uh, and, and then he was like, yeah, after this, we hung out. We had a, we had a beer or two with, with Mel. And then he was like, I'm going to go to the Cactus Club and check out this other fucking space. And I was like, yeah, man, you rock it out, dude. <laughs> that guy's great. Uh, but I, we performed at the Puddler's Hall, right? And, uh, I didn't know about this, about this space until we got there, but it was like one of the oldest union halls in Milwaukee or, 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 or it was the first union hall in Milwaukee or something along those lines, which like, what, a, what could there be a more perfect space for, for a comedian like myself and Lee camp to perform at than something that used to be an old union hall, right? Like that's like a union stronghold. That's fucking awesome. Um, and Casey was very cool. We, we, we packed out the room. It was, it was a lot warmer than we expected it to be. Uh, and we had a ton of people and the AC was like cranked up on high and just like fighting through. It was just like, well, I'm, I'm, we're doing the best we can here. Uh, because we were not expecting it to be that hot in September in Milwaukee. Right. We were like, we're by the fucking lakes. Like this place is cold most of the time. Like, where is that right now? Where is the cold? I was promised some sort of chilliness and I am not feeling any of it right now. Uh, and we'll, and the, uh, but that show was just a lot of fun. Uh, and here's the cool thing about Lee is I like, I don't expect fucking headliners to pay attention to what I'm doing, but with Lee and, and, and even like Stuart Huff, they've paid attention to what I'm doing and will like give me these notes and be like, I like this bit. I like where this is going. This is an interesting take. What if you did this? Or when you're, when you're doing this performance aspect of it, what if you changed it in this direction or did that? So it's really neat to kind of, uh, to, to have your mentors be your friends and also be people that give you like notes to better you as a comedian, uh, is, is a super fucking cool feeling. It, it, it's a, it's a really, really cool feeling. Um, so I, I, I enjoyed that aspect of it a lot too. Uh, when, when we were in Madison, we, we had a little bit of a snafu with, with the, with the venue. We, we worked with Brink Lounge and I guess there was some internal snafus that happened, but, uh, thanks to a very professional staff that was there, uh, the owner and I talked about what happened, uh, and we were able to work everything out. And we moved our show from the um, the theater room, like they have like a back cabaret room to the front lounge um, and nothing had to be changed. Uh, we still got like over a hundred some odd people in that room and we moved everything around and the staff was super professional, very courteous uh, and really helped us like put together this show uh, in, in a pretty professional manner. So I, I, I appreciated that. Um, because it could have been a disaster, you know, we could have gotten in there and they could have been like, we don't really give a shit. You figure it out. But they helped us with setting up the tables, setting up like the, the merch area and the registration stuff and, um, really made it a fun show. Uh, and you know, like it felt like there were a lot more than like a hundred people in that room. Uh, because of the way it was set up, you know, uh, and I always appreciate whenever there's a staff that gives a shit <laughs> because I've worked with enough people where it's just like, no, we don't care. Okay. This is just whatever, you know, like I've worked enough, en enough with, with, with that kind of stuff. So when I find, a, find people that give a shit, it, it means a whole lot. Um, and then we kind of hung out for a while and for a a long while, like probably way too long. Like I was so exhausted the following day because <laughs> uh, we just hung out with people uh, and bullshitted and talked for, for such a long time, um, which again, I like doing, but I'm also like, it's one of those things where I'm like, I'm getting old and I need to prepare myself for that. <laughs> uh, but I, I had such a fun time though. I had such a great time there. Uh, Moving on to Old Town Music and Arts in Portsmouth, Virginia, in the Norfolk area. Uh, big shout out to uh, to Aiden and Angel and Jay from the Southeastern Virginia uh, Atheist Secular Humanists. 
I think Sevash is what they go, what the acronym is. I think I got that right. If I fucked it up, I'm sorry. Sorry, you guys. Don't hate me. I'm just a human. I'm trying my best here. <laughs> Uh, but Aiden and, and, and all those folks have been coming to see me in, in the Norfolk area for for quite a while, and I appreciate the hell out of that, uh, because performing uh, in front of a crowd like that, that cares and, and like is into that sort of stuff, is super fun right and they and they are very fun like they're very engaged and they and they're like very enthusiastic about all this stuff um so i was very excited uh to go back to to old town music and arts which is um a record shop and a uh and they teach music out of there and everything so it's a, it's a little bit of an interesting space uh where there's an audience in front of you and an audience to the side of you so it's like this uh kind of um perpendicular setup for the crowd um, and, uh, you know, we, we had a little bit of a lighter turnout than we did the, the, uh, the year before. Um, and, uh, but they were still a really great crowd. Uh, and it's part of the reason why I want to go back there. I'm going to be back there in January at the venue on the 35th. I'm coming through Norfolk is because of the people that come to these shows. Uh, I, that, that space is great. It's super intimate. Um, uh, but I want to try to do a little something different uh, in that area. Uh, but I'm, I'm again, Lori Creek is going to open. And if you haven't fucking heard Lori Creek, they're incredible. Uh, Jason and Jesse are, they're super fun, fucking fun to watch, by the way. <laughs> like, if you watch them on stage, they're great. <laughs> they're kind of like, it's it's like t- t- talking to them off stage is what they do on stage. Like, they give each other shit and stuff. And like, it's a super fucking fun. Uh, and their songs are amazing. Like, I I love it. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan. And this is one of those things where I'm like, cool, I've conned my talented friends to come open for me. <laughs> uh, it's kind of how I feel about it, <laughs> you know, but I, I, I love having them on the show. Uh, it's, it's just so much fun. I feel like the pairing of their music with my comedy is really, really well. Um, and, and, uh, and I like hanging out with them, you know, they're good friends. And, uh, I'm, I'm like every time it's another place where I'm like, yeah, cool. Let's just hang out till the sun comes up. And then I'm like, I am super 31. I am so 31 right now. <laughs> uh, but that, that is one of my favorite cities to go back to every year. Uh, I have multiple times a year, sometimes depending on the, depending on the circumstances of, of the year and everything. Uh, so, uh, looking forward to seeing, to, looking forward to seeing everybody at the, at the venue on the 35th, uh, on January 3rd. Um, so yeah. And then, uh, Shakespeare's in Kalamazoo. Boy, that fucking place is awesome. Uh, Bob Fredericks runs a show, uh, every Thursday at Shakespeare's in Kalamazoo. This is another basement venue, people. I'm telling you, fucking basement venues are rad as hell. They're so great. Um, I, I, I have a good, like, I've been going through Kalamazoo quite often. I feel like, again, things are kind of picking up in that area, uh, where people are coming back to see me and people are coming back to see me on purpose, which is kind of neat. Uh, and I got to see a friend that I haven't seen in, in a really long time. Um, you know, Kirsten and Jeff, uh, super fucking sweet people that I met in Cincinnati years before. And, uh, and they moved up to Grand Rapids and I kind of wasn't like, I, things get crazy, right? Like they moved, I had a bunch of shit going on and, uh, I kind of missed out on, on Hank keeping up with them. Uh, but it was really fucking great to see them. It was so good to see them and hang out with them. Um, and I, the Michigan tour that I did, I did with my good friend, Scott Wilding. And, and that's always nice is every so often to go on tour with somebody, uh, cause you have somebody that you can like sit and talk comedy to instead of just uh, having your own brain to, to, to do things with, you know, like the, the compound neuroses, uh, you can bounce it off somebody and they're like, yeah, I don't think that's, I feel like that. No, I don't think that's what I feel like your brain's just playing tricks. Uh, so it was fun. And that we got to do Bob's podcast. Scott and I got to do Bob's podcast. You're welcome. Future self, uh, which was really, really fun. And, uh, I highly recommend going and checking it out. Um, I'm a little behind on it at the current moment, but because of the holidays and me not being uh, on the road as much, 
uh, because a lot of my podcasting that I get to to do and get to listen to is when I'm driving around. Uh, so I haven't really been driving around all that much. Um, just see short trips here and there in town. So, uh, but you're welcome, future self, myself, Scott Wilding are on that, uh, and we talk about like old cartoons and uh, and of course politics because you can't you can't not have uh, politics when I'm in the room. Um, so, uh, and then. Uh, we went to the Robin Theater in Lansing, Michigan. Such an incredible room. Such an incredible room. Um, I, I recorded that show, so I might be putting out clips from it next year. Uh, and if you're on my Patreon, if you are a patron of my Patreon, uh, you will probably hear that entire set at some point when Politely Angry is going to be released because it is going to be a longer version of that show and a little bit more raw because uh, I don't think I had all of this stuff figured out yet. Uh, but the Founding Fathers bit will probably be on there. Uh, but I wanted to record at the Robin Theater because the Robin Theater is just such a special place. Uh, Dylan and Gina D, again, they're kind of community driven and community oriented in Rio town. And they've made these partnerships with these other spaces in the area. And, uh, you know, it's cool to find venue, like all these people on here, it's cool to find people that you kind of connect with. Um, and they're cool with different ideas that are cool to hearing that stuff out. So, you know, it's been a couple of years that I've been going to the Robin and every time I'm there, we get this really amazing crowd, right? Like we connected with the the Lansing Bernie people, uh, and they bring a, a whole group of people. This year, the Lansing DSA was was involved too, and they brought a whole crop full of people. And on top of that, outside, um, the the UAW strike was going on. So just like the energy that surrounds that space is just perfect for something like this, you know. Um, and uh, Dylan has a great like post-apocalyptic folk rock band <laughs> that I'm, that just released an album on Bandcamp, uh, and I'm very excited to, to to add that to my holiday listening. Um, I, I I have a couple of couple of new music stuff that I'm excited to listen to because it's the holiday time and you know like I'm, I don't have that much work to do. I'm I'm probably gonna sit and write a whole lot, and when I write, I like to listen to music, right? Like usually instrumentals, but it has to be some. If it if it has words, it's got to be something that I don't know the words to, so that I'm not like typing out the lyrics to this song. Uh, but that's that's on my holiday listening list, and I'm very excited to listen to it. So it's like it's doing stuff like that that's that's innovative and that's different and that's gonna you know challenge you and uh, that's that's the spirit that I fucking love about it. Um, and that's why I love going to the Robin theater. And every year so far, we have been getting more and more people to come out to see the show, uh, which is exciting because for me, I, I want the venue to succeed as well, right? Like if the venue does well, then I'm doing well. So it's creating that partnership. It's creating that relationship. That's really important. And it's another place that every time I go there, I always end up hanging out with some people. Like I, this this year, Dylan was able to come out and hang out with us and stuff and chit chat and talk about touring and talk about different ideas. But like the Bernie people hung out and the DSA people hung out, right? I recently had Brandon Betts on the podcast. Uh, Brandon is one of the city council members in Lansing, uh, ran on socialist platforms and beat out the neoliberal candidate that put more money into her campaign than Brandon did, you know? So that kind of gives me hope that, and it's proof that, hey, you know what? We really don't need money in politics. We need ideas in politics. And and it's people like Brandon that really need to, to, to be out there, you know, that we need to be supporting, that we need to be putting out there, that have these interesting different ideas that are gonna progress our lives forward, that are gonna make our lives a little bit better. Um, so Lansing kind of has that spirit and that energy and I fucking love it, you know? Um, so every time I go there, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to come back to Lansing and I'll probably be back in Lansing around the same time, which is the first week of October. <laughs> uh, that one, I feel like I'm going to keep like the first week of October is specifically going to be, uh, um, 
uh, reserved for this Michigan tour. Um, so, uh, because at that point, like the fall's starting to set in, you know, like school's back in session. So some of these college towns will bring, maybe bring some college kids in, into it. And people are actually willing to go out and do stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Michigan first week of October plan for it. Cause I am, <laughs> Uh, I finally got to get to go uh, go to Buffalo again this year. I haven't been in Buffalo in like I think like two years. Uh, I performed at Mr. Good Bar. Um, at Bennett Solkowski runs a Thursday night show. I got to see my good friend Jamie Bono, who I haven't seen since the last time I was in Buffalo, which is again two years ago, right? Um, I got to sit and chat with him. Uh, and Jamie, it, if you can't smile around Jamie, uh, then you have a demon inside of you and you should go see somebody <laughs> jamie just lights up your face like you can't not be excited when you're around jamie bono i've seen I've, I've, jamie bono and i've known each other for years we started in the comedy scene down in pittsburgh right so we slogged it out through all those open mic nights and stuff um you know and, and uh i love that dude we every time i get to hang out with him it is such a blast and he's so funny, and he's so cool, and he's so sweet and kind, uh, and super smart. Like, I fucking loved it. So that was a real nice moment for me. Uh, I got to meet Sandy. Uh, Sandy's another fan that, that has followed a bunch of my videos. She came to see the live show. That was very, that was really cool. Um, the thing with the Mr. Bo Mr. Good Bar show was it started out kind of slow. Uh, my set did. My set kind of started out a little slow. Like, it took them a little while to warm up to me, but by the time they warmed up to me, like, it, it was just, like, everything fired on all the cylinders, you know? Like, the first five or ten minutes were, okay, we're catching up. We're, 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 we're getting to what you're saying, you know? We're, okay, we're, we're, we're seeing what you're putting down, you know? Uh, and, and it was one of those shows that, that reminded me, like, this is different, and this is weird, you know, this is not the traditional form of comedy, and that's okay, but you have to be patient with people because sometimes they are expecting to set up punch to set up punch, be self-deprecating, you know, uh, talk about your dick, talk about getting drunk or whatever, but when you subvert their expectations, it takes a minute for people to be like, I like this. I'm glad my expectations were subverted. And that's kind of what happened in Buffalo. Because once they got into it, it was like, boom, boom, boom. You know, they were just super excited. Uh, and then I feed off that energy, right? Like, uh, I, I try not to get bummed out when a crowd isn't super into the show and try to, like, make some adjustments here and there without giving up um, who I am. But... Uh, it's hard because I, because it's very easy to get in my own head and be like, this isn't working, this isn't working, this isn't working. But staying out of that and saying, no, stay here, stay in the pocket and push through because they're going to be on board. Give them a minute. Slow down a little bit. Be patient with them. Um, and I felt like Buffalo kind of reminded me to do that a little bit, which was cool. And it's something that I kind of run in my head when a crowd doesn't, you know, it's like, oh, the big laughter didn't happen at the line that usually gets the big laughter. It's like, no, stick with it. Slow down a little bit. You know, this is different. Let them let them get accustomed to it being different. So uh, thank you, Buffalo. Um, I did another show on debate night in Washington, D.C., <laughs> I was at the pie shop in D.C. Uh, shout out to Ben Daniels for helping me out with that. Shout out to Devine Kerr for fucking killing it on that show. Uh, ben and Devine, two of my favorite fucking comedians in that area. Love them. They're great people. They're great folks. Uh, go see them. Uh, ben runs a show at the pie shop called The Upper Crust. Um, and uh, I, I got you know hooked up with them through, through Ben. Um, so... It's a very intimate little space, kind of the kind of one of the most perfect spaces in you know in that city. There's a couple reliable tavern, which is where I will be in in March of 2020 recording my album in Washington D.C. Um, and I haven't recorded an album in Washington D.C. ever. Yeah, I don't think I've ever recorded my album in Washington D.C. But because of this show, I, I thought maybe yeah, let's do it. Let's try it out. 
um, and, and March 2020 at the Reliable Tavern. But the Pie Shop, uh, very intimate space, super fun, super cool show. Carter Thompson came back to see that show. I'm telling you, man, this guy has seen the show more times than anybody else in the country. You should, if you want to know what the show is really about and get an honest opinion, you, you should go talk to Carter. Because <laughs> Carter's going to know. He's seen it a bunch. <laughs> um, but it was debate night. It was debate night. Uh, and I was just, I was so concerned about it. But we got about 20 people in that room, uh, which again goes to show like there's enough people that are just like, yo, fuck these debates. <laughs> these debates are dumb. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. So, um, I was I was I was happy to see that. Uh, very fun show. It was also a Tuesday night. Like we got twenty people in the room on a Tuesday night. That's pretty rad. That's pretty cool. I was I was pretty pumped about that. Uh, so, uh, pie shop, super great venue, super cool space. Great pies, by the way. Uh, go eat their pies. They are delicious. Uh, it's above dangerously delicious pies. Um, but uh, that is one of the spaces. It's always good to have a couple different venues in a town that are willing to, you know, work with you and that are cool and, like, you can form a, a relationship with. Uh, in certain cities, it's it's good to have some options. Um, and with DC, between the Reliable Tavern and the Pie Shop, like, these are two cool spaces that are kind of doing some cool, interesting things that are bringing interesting, different uh, uh, types of, of entertainment through their, uh, through their doors. So uh, looking forward to recording at the Reliable Tavern. Uh, in Washington, D.C. in March of 2020. Um, then I want to talk about Blank Slate and uh, Urban Artifact together. That was the weekend. If you can see it, I'm going to see. Yeah, there you go. Got me a Blank Slate pin right there. Uh, they are a um, all-ages DIY uh, venue in Elyria, Ohio. I've been performing there couple different times uh, for since 20, I want to say 2014. I met Eddie actually in a different DIY space and he had a little complaint about my show. And a friend of mine contacted me and said, hey, were you in Akron? Because I think my friend came to see your show and he had, he had a complaint about it. Like he agreed with what you had to say, but he had a complaint about it. And I went and read a status and then I messaged him and I was like, hey man, I read your status. Uh, can I talk to you about it? Like, I was like, I'm not going to get mad at you or anything. Like, I don't, I don't feel like you called me out and oh, shamed me or whatever. Like, I'm, I'm more curious about like, how did I miss what I was trying to achieve? Right. Basically the conversation was that I was trying to do this macho tough guy accent, but it came out very Southern right? It came out that like hillbilly Southern accent. And every so often I do dip into that again, but really I'm trying to do like the macho watcho kind of, kind of thing. And when I miss the mark on that, I think about Eddie and I think about the conversation that we had where he basically said, no, you made me realize like I have also, like I do that too. I have that prejudice about people from the South. And here's the thing, like I don't have that prejudice about people from the South either, right? Like I, I love touring the South. I love touring the Midwest. Like those are my favorite places to come tour because there are genuine people that fucking live there. And it's not about labels. It's not about political affiliations or anything like that, right? Like I have conservative people that come to see my shows. I have liberal people that come to see my shows, right? Socialists, libertarians, Green Party, fucking Bernie fans, Tulsi fans, people that might think Mayor Pete is fine. Like all of these people come to my shows and I'm, and I'm very happy to talk to every single one of them and have an open-minded conversation as long as that's what it is. It's not name calling or anything. And that's what we talked about. So when I veer into that and when I do a voice and it comes off being um, mocking of Southerners, I am mindful of that because of Eddie. Because Eddie challenged me on that and told me, hey, you're, if you're trying to do something different, you're not hitting the mark. So that's part of the reason why I like Blank Slate. And every time that I've done a show at Blank Slate, it's been really fucking cool and really fucking exciting. The unfortunate thing about it this year was we weren't able to do the show. We showed up, but nobody came. Um, there were other things going on. It was first Friday. 
Um, and Eddie is still willing to work with me <laughs> um, and help me out, right? Like he might have a different contact at a different space uh, to go do something in. And uh, that's cool and exciting. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm fucking down for that, man. I'm totally fucking down for that. So, um, yeah, that was, that was a really cool experience. And it's always good to see Eddie. It's always good to hang out with him and chat with him. He's another person that, like, if you're around Eddie, it's hard not to smile because he's just so excited and so, you know, pumped about stuff. Um, they are, they're, they're getting a coffee shop. If you if go support them on Patreon and help them get this coffee shop off the ground so that, you know, like, like that's something that, uh, that I think that place needs. And here's the thing is if you're coming to see someone like me that talks about issues and stuff, yeah, getting a, getting a little liquored up is, is cool, but really, if you want to experience all of it, be fucking caffeinated. Experience it that way. That's going to fucking shift some shit. Because usually when I'm on stage, I'm caffeinated. <laughs> I'm caffeinated now. I'm caffeinated all the time. So uh, I want to talk about Urban Artifact too. Because Cincinnati has been a city that's been up and down for me a whole lot. Uh, where I'll have a really great show. And then like a show where I'm like, I don't know what the fuck happened. Why, is it no, why isn't anybody here? Uh, and... I had such a wonderful time. Um, I'm trying to work a little bit more with uh, with Aid Cincinnati. I've, I've done shows with them before. Uh, and what they stand for is very similar to the stuff that I believe in, another community-oriented thing, right? And uh, I... Um, yeah, I, 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 I liked working with Urban Artifact quite a bit. Um, they're, they were renovating some stuff, uh, at that space, creating a new space and things of that sort. So, um, but they were very artist friendly. Like they were very focused on making sure that the artists were comfortable with the space, that it, it, it was a space that was built around what we needed instead of, um, instead of like, okay, well, how can we funnel people into the bar all the time? Uh, it was more about how can we enhance the experience of not just the artist, but also the audience that are coming to see this artist. So um, that was really, really fucking cool. Um, then Castleburg uh, in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, uh, Mike Engel runs some fucking fantastic shows. That's a really rad space. And uh, and we, we it was weird. We had a couple that came and sat through a majority of the show and then like left in the in the in the middle of, of one of the opener sets. Uh, and I don't know if they were like, like the assumption was that they were, they were Trumpian people, but I've had Trump supporters at my show. I talked about where a, a, a guy with a MAGA hat sat through my entire set. I, I opened with that that night because of, because of what happened is there was a guy with a MAGA hat in Little Rock, Arkansas that sat through my entire fucking show. And the disappointing thing about that is I'll never know what he was about. Ah, I didn't get to talk to him because by the time I got off stage, he paid his bill and got to his car because he'd been there for six hours. But I was just like, why? Fucking talk to me. I want to know more about you. You just listened to an immigrant talk about late stage capitalism and, and why it's failing. And, and like competitive behavior and how we all need to fucking work together. This like socialisty ideas. And you were like, yes, on board. From, and you fucking wore the hat of a guy that's just like, does, it doesn't stand for any of that shit, you know? So I brought that up in Castleburg and, and, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of <laughs> very interesting. Uh, but I had a great time at that show, man. I had, I had a super fun time with Mike. Uh, we we hung out and watched some fucking Disney Plus, which uh, there's so much on Disney Plus. <laughs> I need to get it because everybody keeps talking about the Mandalorian, and uh, it, you know we watched that old school Spider Man, that fucking '90s Spider Man. That shit was dope. That was great. Uh, yeah, so shout out to, to Mike Engel. I think he's recording an album soon, so you guys should go check that out if you're in the Richmond area. Uh, I got to see Elizabeth, who came to see me last year. Um, might, might be able to do uh, a summertime house show with her. And uh, yeah, that was, it, was just a, it was just a really fun time hanging out with everybody. And uh, oh, f by the way, Castleburg, also phenomenal drinks. 
Like, great beer. It's it's really good beer. Uh, I'm trying to think of what fruit beer I had. Because I had a very specific, like, fruit flavor. Like, I'm not really into fruit beers all that much. But the way that they did it was really interesting. Because I think it like, had, like, ginger and cardamom. I'm, I'm think I want to say tangerine, but doesn't matter. All their fucking beers are phenomenal. They're great. Highly recommend it. Go check it out. <laughs> ah, finally, we're going to talk about the house show in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, set up by uh, Carter Thompson, the person that has seen the show the most. <laughs> Carter set up the house show, and I had such a fucking good time. And the way that I met Carter was through couch surfing, right? I met Carter through couch surfing, um, and I stayed with him a couple times. He came out to see myself and another comic named Andrew Frank, and uh, and we just started talking and, and kept in touch with each other. And uh, so he came to see me in D.C. He came to see me in Greensboro. He told his girlfriend to come see me in Chattanooga, and then when his girlfriend moved to D.C., he brought her to that trip. So, I, like, that, this guy is fucking phenomenal. Like, nobody needs to do that, right? Nobody needs to push me as much as... As Car- like Carter has uh, Carter has supported me like a shit ton, um, and then he set up the show and got a bunch of the people from the couch surfing community, and I got a bunch of people that haven't seen me in Charlotte in quite some time um, to come out and see the show, and I did it top to bottom, right, including the founding fathers bit, and and he talked to me about that bit specifically and was just like, yeah, man, I really like that bit. So when I when when I came to the conclusion that that I, I am still struggling so much with this bit and making it work, um, that I think I'm deviating away from the rest of the show. Uh, Some of it correlates back into the thesis of the show, but not enough of it does. I decided to back burner it for the next show and and really write it out and build it out for this next show uh, that I do have some ideas about that I will probably talk about in some later video. Uh, I had to text him about it to be like, hey man, (laughs) I have some news, like, don't freak out. Uh, because he has, right? He's seen the show. He supports it. Like, he talks to me about it and stuff. Oh, and he got to perform at the house show, which was really cool. Uh, which was really, really fucking cool to see that because he'd been talking about getting into stand-up for a while. Uh, and he told some sto- uh, some uh, some stories about, you know, g- getting sober and everything. And, and uh, like, he fucking did great. He did a really great job with it. And I'm super fucking excited. So... Uh, I'm excited to come back to Charlotte, uh, in, in whatever capacity I come back to Charlotte, uh, in 2020, uh, probably again, fall, winter time. Um, I might be touring the South around that time, uh, trying to sort out what the year is really going to look like. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, uh, I've, I've got some thoughts on it. Uh, and then we did uh, a show at Le Chat Noir again, another phenomenal listening room that I've done a bunch of different times. And every single time that I've done it, it was it, it's been a super fun show. Uh, this year we had a little bit of a smaller turnout uh, than than we anticipated, but I got to just kind of riff with the crowd, talk to them a little bit, tell some weird little road stories, and uh, I did that in Erie as well because we had a similar situation. And I just saw uh, my friend Dan Brady who was like, "You should do a road road story album where you tell all these like tour stories," um, and. Uh, and like and record it and put it out there and I have thought about it and the way that I think I might want to do that is by trying to if I do something like that it would be so different than what I'm what I'm doing um I might do it as as uh like when I don't have material that I know I'm gonna work on like right now there's at least 40 50 minutes of backburnered material that I'm going to start with for the next show um, if I get to that point at the end of that next show and have no material and stuff to work on, I could run a, sh- a run a, 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 a ver- like this road story show. Uh, and a lot of it was like stuff that I did at the Le, Le Chat Noir show, but I want to do it with a backing band. So there's kind of a soundtrack to these stories um, and work with some of my friends in order to make like a really big kind of a fucking show to, to tell these stories. So... That is, uh, that is a thought that's in the back of my head. And it comes from doing some of these small shows in these listening rooms. Doing these small shows in these listening rooms helps me kind of get better at just riffing uh, and writing on stage. 
and telling these stories and condensing the stories and finding out what's important in these interesting little details. Um, and, and these listing rooms have people that are willing to go on that ride with you. So, um, yeah, I really, I really appreciated that show. It was a really fun show. Uh, and I will definitely be back to La Chat Noir, uh, any time that they want me back. Uh, Jay and Chris and everybody that works there is just phenomenal people. Really good, really good people, really fun people to work with. Uh, and our final show uh, that we, I want to talk about is The Juggling Gypsy in Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, another kind of small crowd show. We, we maybe only had about 10 people there. And it was an early show. There's a late night, like, huge, like, circusy, carnival type show. Uh, burlesque and music and sketches. Um... But I had a really fucking good time. The people there were super engaged. I got to see my friends Peter and Anna that I, you know, basically only get to see when I go to Wilmington. I get, get to kind of keep up with them online and, and chat with them every once in a while. Um, but it was really, really fucking fun. And, and really, like, the thing that I forget sometimes, and I get into my own head and I get into this funk is sometimes these smaller shows are just as fun, if not more fun, as, as the packed out shows, you know? And that and this is an example of that. The Juggling Gypsy is a small little room. It's a weird little space. Uh, the people that run it are, are a bunch of wonderful weirdos, right? And, and, I, and I have a really good time with them. Uh, I performed with the Juggling Gypsy three or four times now. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had a weird experience here and there with, with, with the shows there. Uh, nothing to, to say about the, the gypsy itself because the staff at the gypsy is always very mindful about, about that sort of stuff is, is again, they're trying to create a space for performers, um, to feel comfortable and audiences to feel comfortable. Uh, it's part of the reason why I like going back there as much as I do. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I very much enjoyed my time at the at the juggling gypsy and we'll we'll look forward to go back there probably in the fall or the winter <laughs> um yeah thank you guys for checking this out uh i hope you guys enjoyed it i know these are kind of some of the longer videos that i've done um kind of recapping some stuff uh so i kind of wanted to break it up into two parts into two days uh and i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys get the time to listen to it and check it out and uh i hope you guys come come to see me on tour because i've got a bunch of dates that I'm doing in 2020, 2020, I'm, I'm going to kind of expand the way that I'm touring. Um, and, and, uh, I think I have some stuff figured out. Like I have a spreadsheet that I'm working on over the holidays, uh, to kind of, um, help me figure out where I want to go at what times of the year and how to, how to market and get people out. Like there are specific things for specific towns that I've learned and I'm going to compile all of that information so that I can do it more efficiently. And if I can work on booking and promoting more efficiently, then I can work on creating more content and podcasts and stand up material um, more efficiently as well, because I have, I've, I'll have more time to dedicate into that. So that's kind of the goal um, of doing this, this spreadsheet thing that I'm doing. Um, and figuring out like where I can go at what times of the year and how the turnouts have been and what promotional materials they can utilize to to increase the turnout and so on and so forth. So, uh, but like I said, I've got a bunch of dates coming up in 2020 already. I'm recording my album in at in Williamsport and uh, Washington D.C. and probably also Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Maybe a couple other spots here and there. We'll have some recordings done as well. Uh, but, uh, uh, go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, my tour starts in ja on January 3rd. I'm going to be at the venue on the 35th in Norfolk, Virginia, January 4th. I'm at the Comedy Closet Comedy Club in Columbia, South Carolina, January 5th. I'm at the station in Carborough, North Carolina, uh, January 17th, I'm going to be at the uh, Caffeine Underground in Brooklyn, New York. January 24th, I'm at La Costaneda with Lank Out Loud Comedy in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. January 25th, I'm opening for Lee Camp at the Ruba Club in Philadelphia. January 29th, I will be at 730 Tavern 
in Boston, Massachusetts, and on January 31st, I will be at the Appahattian Theater in Portland, Maine. Tickets are available for a lot of these shows right now. Go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. It's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Uh, you can grab my stand-up comedy albums while you're there. You can check out past episodes of my podcast and um, uh, shows uh, on there. You can check out stand-up clips. You can read reviews, see other podcasts that I have done. Um, and uh, you can also become a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, I will be probably working on some updates for the website with some alternative uh, ways to donate for people that don't like Patreon or PayPal, um, possibly utilizing things like a Cash App or Venmo or something along those lines, um, or a third, uh, you know, sustaining membership uh, option as well. So, uh, the, the lot of things coming down the pike. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like, share, uh, leave a comment, uh, and, uh, and hopefully I will see you guys in 2020 on the road. Uh, Take it easy, guys.